In this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of operational amplifiers. These are fairly complex devices. They're actually made from transistors, and their purpose is to amplify weak signals or perform mathematical operations. So, so they can be used for analog computing. So the idea here is they perform mathematical operations on signals, and a signal is a voltage or a current which is used to hold information. So we embed information on this electrical parameter. So to talk about these, we have to start at a very basic level. So I'm going to talk about ideal operational amplifiers. Like I said, there are many complex levels at which we can talk about these, but we'll start off with the basics. So an ideal operational amplifier. But to understand that, we'll first talk about gain. So let's introduce that concept. We'll start by drawing the block diagram of an amplifier. OK, so this is a block diagram. It does not have the same kind of specificity or detail that a schematic diagram would have. But our amplifier looks like a triangle. It has an input voltage, Vn, and an output voltage, Vo, that is just a scalar times Vn. So we write A as the ratio of Vo over Vn. And this is what we call the gain. The gain is a measure of how much amplification the amplifier gives. So if A is greater than 1, we have amplification. Let's put here absolute value of A greater than 1. On the other hand, if the absolute value of A is less than 1, then we have attenuation. So this makes signals smaller. If A is equal to 1, it's neither amplification or attenuation. We might call that just a buffer. It doesn't do anything. There are other ways to categorize amplifiers also. If the gain is greater than 0, then we have what we call non-inversion. And if A is less than 0, we have what we call inversion. So if you had some waveform in time, for example, then the inverting amplifier would turn it upside down, reflect it around the time axis. OK, so that is the concept of gain. It tells us about how much amplification we get from a device. Now we can introduce the operational amplifier. So we'll now look at a schematic diagram that's more specific than this block diagram. So here is a schematic diagram for an operational amplifier. It has two input terminals. One of them is marked with a minus sign, and the other one is marked with a plus sign. So we'll call this the inverting input. And this is the non-inverting input. We'll assume that there are voltages here V minus and V plus. And then we can also assume currents entering I plus and I minus. And then we have an output, maybe it has a voltage V0 and then a current I0. This VDD and minus VDD, these are generally constant voltages. And the plus VDD offers a high side input and then the minus VDD offers a negative side input. That's the full operational amplifier. I forgot to write amplifier here. The gain for this device might be a current or a voltage. So for example, a voltage gain might be V0 being A times V in, but V in isn't really plus or minus. It's actually maybe the difference between these. So V plus minus V minus, that we might say is the V in. That's what we call a differential voltage. So it's the difference between two voltages. OK. That's the idea behind an operational amplifier. Often, we won't consider the power supply. So our reduced operational amplifier or simplified operational amplifier will look like this. So we ignore the power supply. One thing I'll point out is we can't do a KCL with the simplified op amp because we don't know about what current is going into the device from the power supply. So 
that won't really work. Resist the temptation to do that. That is to say, if we wanted to treat that like one node, one closed system where the current entering or the current leaving has to sum to zero, we can't because we're not taking into account the power supply. That's an aside. We won't dwell on that in this beginning treatment of operational amplifiers. Okay, so that's the simplified op amp. One thing we need to discuss is the uh, set of characteristics for an ideal operational amplifier. So I'll list a few characteristics that will help guide you through any problem that we do with these in a beginning treatment. The first characteristic is that of infinite input impedance. Or if I haven't introduced impedance to you yet, you can think of it as resistance. The implication for this is that no current can enter the device. So we'll write here I plus is equal to zero, and that's equal to I minus. The second important characteristic is that of infinite gain. So for a non-infinite output VO, we need the input signal, which is the differential between V plus and V minus, to be essentially zero. So we'll write that like this. So the only way for that to happen is for this to approach zero. And the only way for that to happen is for the two input voltages to be the same. That should actually be a V minus right there. So we'll put here V plus is equal to V minus. And this is what we'll call a virtual short. So you could imagine a wire connecting those two inputs. However, we'll just keep it as a virtual short, not a real short, because that would allow current to flow between the two inputs, but the ideal op amp actually does not. So only think of it as a virtual short in that the voltage between the plus and the minus terminals is zero. So if I put my two leads of a voltmeter there on the two inputs, you'd always read zero. Those are the basic assumptions behind an operational amplifier. I really want you to know these because they will be useful, like I said, in many operational amplifier problems. And we'll do an example of these in another video.